Welcome to my Beginner's Guide Series Part 3, Text. This is going to be interesting because I'm actually not going to talk about satin stitch fonts all that much. I'm going to mention them early on, and then I'm going to show you a lot of neat little tricks you can do with system fonts. And by system fonts, I mean this button right here will give you system fonts. And satin stitch fonts or... Some of them are, are not satin stitch, but ink stitch lettering is a whole different different subject. Uh, okay, ink stitch lettering. And from here you can pick, most of these are a satin stitch. And the difference being that a satin stitch font looks really good on its own. Don't really have to do much else to it. I'm going to make that bold. Give it a, some italics. And we'll make it bigger. So. The ink stitch lettering is ready to stitch just like it is. It, somebody else has already converted it into satin columns. And it looks really good. The system font. You have to do a little bit more to it. So I'm going to show you right now. Do object. Do path. Object path. You have to do that for ink stitch to understand that it's something to be stitched. And sometimes, just to be on the safe side, go ahead and run fill tools break apart on that system font. Most of the time that's not necessary. We have separated objects like the small i line with a dot it will complain about that until you do that break apart i don't think any letter i have here would have been an issue but we're going to go ahead and just like that both of these are ready to preview we're going to go ahead and preview it we'll speed it up okay so that's what the stitching looks like we'll hit realistic that we get a better idea that's kind of what it looks like satin stitch it's basically stitching from one side to the other fill stitch it fills just like if you drew a box and you had it fill that box that's basically what you're going to get When you stitch out the fill text, by default, it won't look real good. But by default, anything that you do in ink stitch lettering will look pretty good. You might have to increase the density a little bit, but other than that, it'll look pretty good. To get a satin stitch, I'm going to show you, I've got several videos on how to convert letters to a satin stitch there is no easy button you have to do it manually so i'm just going to show you real quick just an example i have a video showing how to do it the easy way i'm going to do this f the easy way i'm going to draw a line down the center somewhat down the center we're going to make it thick enough to fill that f Eh, four, not 45. We'll go four. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we'll draw another one there and there. Also make it four. And then I'm just going to duplicate this. This is going to be real rough, not very good, but it'll give you an idea. To give you an idea on how to turn that letter into a satin stitch. So from there, I'm going to grab all three of these. And we'll go ahead and do a satin tools. Convert line to satin. Both of them have been converted to a satin stitch. And I'm going to take all three of these. Go back into extensions ink stitch 
and we're going to do a satin tools auto route satin columns i'm going to turn off jump stitches because some machines don't recognize ink stitches jump stitch so we'll do it that way I'm going to close on this auto satin that we just made. I'm just going to highlight that and we'll take a look at that all by itself. Yeah, not too bad. Definitely room for improvement. If I was going to improve that real quick, I'd go into params. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go into the node tool. Grab this and pull it on up to the top. We're going to select that auto satin and then we're going to go into ink stitch params. The main thing, this is zigzag peak to peak. I'm going to reduce it down to at least three, maybe two point or maybe 0.25. Yeah. And there's still a few issues there, but you get the idea. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on satin stitch. Yeah, you can see there's there's a few issues there, but that's basically the gist of how you could do that. We're going to work in mostly we're going to work in system fonts and we're going to play around a little bit. So what can we do with a system font that we can't do with a satin stitch font well, first of all i'm going to show you how to make a set make a system font look a little bit better we'll make an a i'm going to go back into the bold italic and we'll make it bigger so eh, a little smaller okay so there's our a and then we got to make it object path we have to do that so now that's your you're basically telling ink stitch this is the path i want you to follow that's kind of how that works so we now have an object a path we have a path a to make this look better without turning it into a satin stitch we'll go to params we're gonna turn off underlay but leave underpath on that's important and then we're gonna the spacing between rows you want to knock that down a little bit you want that at least to be 0.2 and running stitch uh, length of stitch two So that does not exactly give you a satin stitch and you'll have to play around with this a little bit when you're doing it to get the quality that you're really looking for if you're not turning it into a satin stitch we'll take a quick look at realistic view speed it up and realistic so that's not too bad and the reason you're getting rid of that underpath is because it's already going to be moving those stitches closer together you may have to move it closer than that but it's going to if you if you keep the underpath you're going to end up with a really thick piece and i don't want that that's how you would turn a system font into a not really a satin stitch but kind of a fake satin stitch and and it's not 100 percent, but it's not bad so what can we do with a system font well for one thing you can do i'm actually going to get my a back i'm going to just use it one thing you can do is an applique you can turn a system font into an applique font which is really cool 
And here is a picture of one that my wife did for the local high school. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, the way you turn this into a applique is first of all, you got to get rid of the fill. No more fill. Give it a stroke and then duplicate it twice. And now we have three of the same thing here. On this bottom two, we're going to go back into stroke, stroke style. Take that down to like a 0.5, something like that. And then we're going to give it a dotted line so it's a straight stitch. And then we're going to go to extensions, ink stitch, commands, attach commands to se selected layer. And we're going to stop or pause machine after sewing this object. Hit close. So on this on this top layer, we're going to leave it on about three. That 3.3 is probably going to be just fine. But that top layer, we're going to turn into a satin stitch. Convert line to satin. It's going to convert both of those into a satin stitch. Outstanding. And then we're going to take a look at. We're going to take a look at it and I'm going to show you how it works. So that first that first stitch shows you where the fabric goes. Once you put the fabric down, the second stitch sews the fabric down to your piece. And then on both of those, you told the machine to stop so you can do what you got to do. And then after you've cut the the pieces the piece of fabric out, now it's going to go back and do a nice satin stitch around the edge. So that your piece is finished up nicely. There's a couple of places right here and right here where it could be a little better, and right here, yeah, right there. So we could adjust those. And basically, all that is is it just not coming together quite right. So we're going to go ahead and Put those two bits together, let them overlap a little bit. And let that overlap a little bit. That should make that one nicer. This one's a little trickier. I'm going to go ahead and run this on out to meet that one. And then these two kind of like that so that should look better do the same thing up here run this one over here run this one up to here make sure they overlap a little bit and then run this one over till it lines up and down. again make them overlap a little bit this up here at the top is kind of a mess. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm going to delete those three nodes. I'll run this up. And this one up like that. So we're going to grab that one. I'm going to delete a couple of these nodes. Run that up. Something like that. And then that one. Okay, that should look a little better. Let's see what that looks like. Extensions, ink stitch, visualize. Speed it up. Oh, yeah, much better. Nice. Yep, that we can go with. So 
<clears throat> first stitching shows you where the fabric goes put the fabric down second stitching stitches the fabric down and then you cut around it and then the satin stitch around it makes a nice neat edge so that's how you can do a lettering applique in ink stitch another thing that's really easy to do with a system font is to wrap it around circles curves what have you and i'll show you that line of text and i want to wrap that around a circle we're going to make the border wall a lot smaller okay so i want to add this line of text to this path so text put on path that's it and then to get it to turn where you want it to turn select just the circle path and spin it around so there's your line of text on a circle and you can also make it bigger we'll do something like that make it a little bit more round yeah click it again line of text and you can still edit that line of text if you need to because we have not set that to path yet so it's still technically a line of text still and then go back to your to your circle spin it where you want it to be now you don't want that circle to be a part of your stitching so you have to get rid of the circle if you get rid of the circle now then this goes back to being straight because there's no longer a path for text to path to be on. Hit Control Z to bring my circle back. Select the line of text and then path, object to path. Now that line of text is on this curved path and you can delete the circle. And now you can do whatever you want to do with this curved line of text. It's already been object path. I'm going to run break apart. Hit close. And now we can have a look at it. Now keep in mind that that text will not be as good as a statin stitch but if you do those couple of things that i said earlier it will improve the look of it speed this up and line of text still on the curve do a realistic view not too bad not too bad all right close that out i'm going to go into rams uh, ink stitch params and I'm gonna go ahead and do those that little bit of adjustment I'm gonna turn off the underlay I'm gonna set spacing between rows to two and I'm gonna ramp up the running stitch I'm gonna go ahead and ramp it up to about three hit apply let's take another look at it And then do a realistic view. Probably could run that. Probably could run the uh, run them a little bit closer together still, but at some point you get too dense, and your machine won't like you for it. But something you have to play around with, try it out, check it out, that kind of thing. Now something else you could do too is get rid of the fill give it a stroke stroke style two give it a dash line 
and then we're going to go into ink stitch rams give it a bean stitch repeats bean stitch number of repeats one hit apply now let's take a look at what that looks like line of text still and it's just straight stitch one repeat so that's putting a line of text on a curve so let's check out another trick that we can do uh probably should have kept my a but i'll go ahead and make another one there's another one bolt italic hit apply make it bigger So here's another cool trick. What we're going to do is I'm going to make it a different color. And then I'm going to make stroke. And I want that stroke to be the same color. Okay. So now we have, now we have a fill and a stroke of the same color. So now in order to work with lettering, keep in mind, I got to do a object path. So I need to select and then do object path. So now we should have path. Yes, we do. And on that path, we're going to go ahead and do uh, satin tools, convert line to satin. Okay, that's fine. In that case, I just need to duplicate that. So on the top one, get rid of that fill. No fill. Give it a stroke. And on the bottom one, we want fill, no stroke. Okay. So on the top one, now we're going to turn that into a satin stitch. Satin tools, convert line to satin. So now we have that. And on the underlying path, okay, now ink stitch params. So I want space in between rows to be four, maybe. Yes. Uh, get rid of the underlay. No, don't get rid of the underlay. My bad. Get rid of underpath. That's the one we want to get rid of. On autofill, get rid of that underpath as well. Okay, so angle line of stitches, we want to do a 45, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm after. So 45 degree angle. Now on the underlay uh, row spacing, we're going to put the same number. Sweet. That's what I'm after. Fill angle doesn't matter a whole lot, but it's just whatever you want. Now, let's take a look at that. Ink stitch in the visualize. This should be an really neat, cool effect. I like this. Speed it up. Awesome. Realistic. Nice. I like it. So that A ended up with the same problems on those. Needs that couple of fixes that I did. I'm not going to sweat it. We're going to move on to the next thing. What else can you do with system font? You can do a block cutaway. I don't know if that's what it's called. But that's what I'm going to call it. And we're going to make a shape. Color doesn't matter. We're going to type text inside there. Color kind of matters on that, doesn't it? Text. Make it a color. Make it a brighter color. Yeah, it'll work. 
And then we're going to go into our bold italic. It already is, I guess. Doesn't look very bold, does it? Gonna blow it up. Ah, got stroke around it. No stroke. There we go. That's why it didn't look very bold. No stroke. We're gonna fill that into our shape. I'm gonna duplicate it once. And then I'm going to push shift on the shape path uh, difference. I'm going to go with the other one. I'm going to do a no fill. I'm going to change it to a stroke. Make it stroke smaller, about two. Go into that text. We're going to change the color of that stitch around. Just so we can see it better in the visual. Speed up. Oh, you know what? Yep, I did not go object path. And not only that, I didn't turn it into a satin stitch either. Convert line to satin. That's what I get for creating videos at the same time I'm hooking. All right, now let's see what it looks like. This should look better. Move that along. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. Can't do that with a satin stitch font. Not a pre-made one anyway. You could do something like that if you designed it from scratch. Nice. I like that. I'm gonna have to do a hat. It's got something like that on it. I like that. Okay, what else can we do? Oh, but wait, there's more. What is my next trick? My next trick is drop shadow in embroidery. How cool is that? So let's make another text. Text. We're going to do the same bolt italic, hit apply, make it bigger. I want this color to be something. Let's do something a little different. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to duplicate it and duplicate it again. On my objects, I want this one. We're going to drop this. Okay, fine. Now, pull that one down. On that one, we're going to change the color to a more shadow looking color. Ooh, I like that. Sweet. Grab one of the top ones and hit control click. So that you're not selecting all of them. You're just, yeah, like that. Path. Difference. So now, if we move that shadow away, you see it's been cut out. Sweet. How sweet is that? And just like that, we have a drop shadow text effect. Uh, let's see. Okay, we need to run both of them. Object path. And then both of them needs to fill tools, break apart, fill objects. And I'm going to select everything that we can and do a trim. Add command to select an objects, trim thread. Hit close. Let's see what it looks like. Stitch. Visualize. Speed it up. Nice. Nice little drop shadow effect. 
in embroidery. Mm -hmm. Microphone. Sweet. How cool does that look? That is cool. So there's some great options for you if you're doing a if you're doing a satin stitch font versus a fill stitch font. The satin stitch is always going to look better, but the fill stitch, the system font, is just so versatile that you can't discount it. It's it needs to also be part of your tool kit. But anyway, I believe this one's done. Thanks for watching.